Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of HairTube. You'll remember Ashley from a previous video she, uh, we did together. Yep. And she's back to have some colour and a little bit of a haircut today. So we discussed what we were going to do and Ash feels like um, she wants to have her hair more looking like more of a highlighted brunette than like really, really blonde. Yep. So it's going to be a little bit of a process today. What I'm going to do is start by levelling out her base at a level 8 using some Matrix Colour Sync. Then we're going to go back and add some fresh uh, highlights in there, especially she's asked me to frame around her face. And then we'll finish off by stretching the root and toning the ends and we should have a new ash. Mm -hmm. But you still want to be blonde. Yeah, brunette but blonde. Yeah, you do not want to be brunette. <laughs> it's almost like I only do blondes on hair tube. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're going to get started. Um, I'll explain uh, the process Little, in a little bit more detail along the journey um, but as always any color or formula that I use will be in the description so um, if you need reference you can always look there let's get started huh good t-shirt thanks <laughs> I didn't wear mine today I wore my hair tube one oh. alright I'm gonna jet out the back get some color we'll be back okay we're over at the base and so the way we're going to fill and prep uh, Ash's hair is I'm gonna use the uh, matrix uh, alternate action give it a really good cleanse um, I've mixed up half 8P, half 8M, so I want to get it to like a, a gentle um, level 8. I'm going to leave that for maybe 5, 6, 7 minutes. I'm just going to watch it visually. All I want to do is basically even out that so that it looks like we're starting with a more of a brunette base. It's not going to be dark. Um, and then once that's done, we're going to blow dry, uh, as you say, dry just roughly, take it back. That's when we'll start doing our highlights. Uh, and again, we'll go through that process. All right, so we've done uh, step number one, prepped Ashy's hair. So you can see now it's less yellow. It's like obviously deepened it up in certain areas um, and removed the, that sort of like, I guess it's just this, like a discoloration that you, you get when, um, you know, the blonde's just been grown out for a bit. So you can see through here, it's um, obviously a lot darker. It looks a little bit more like latte sort of caramel, which is, uh, going to help us out a lot when we want to actually not be so like block blonde color so this is going to help break break it up so we did half uh, 8m color sync matrix color sync and half 8p now i'm going to go and get some uh, light mask with bonder inside we're going to do some combination of some highlights and maybe a little bit of back combing slash balayage um, primarily in the back here there's some sort of dark spots that need some attention i'll show you just in here like we need some color in there um, and then some color in the top and also in through the sides here. So we'll get some in there. Then once we've done that, we'll process it, we'll stretch the root, we'll tone the ends and then we'll be done. So I'm gonna head out the back, get some color and we'll be back. So you can see that I've just split the hair in two parts, two equal parts, straight down the middle. And I'm just going to do diagonal back slices, or sorry, diagonal back sections. And then through the hairline, I want it to be gentle, so we'll do weaves. And then once we get away from the hairline, so in sort of this area here, um, I'll actually do them a little bit heavier. That's when we'll do a bit of back comb style balayage.
Okay, our back's done, and you can see I've left that little bit out in the top. So I'm gonna go and I'll include that um, when I go through and do the parting. However, this is probably gonna have to be rinsed out first. It's something that I like to talk about when we're doing foils that, um, especially here we've got a band, another color, and then another color. You don't wanna overprocess the hair and damage it. So I've got my watch here telling me how long it's been on. And uh, once that's processed for 20 minutes in the back, um, that'll be coming off. And if that means stopping the foils here, going there, rinsing, come back, then that's what you have to do. So really important that you manage your condition of your hair by rinsing in stages if you have to. You need to go through here doing weaves because we're near the hairline. And then when we get to the top, um, I'm gonna do some heavier slices through there. Both sides are done. And now we're gonna move on to the top. I'm actually gonna lay them weaved all the way along um, so that we get a really um, good amount of blonde in the top and quite heavy. So make somewhat of a statement with the blonde and framing the face. I actually like to do multiple fine sections and, and place them back to back. I'll just head up a little bit, but perfect, thanks. And then the second one we do on top of it, because we're doing back to back, will actually be a weave. But instead of coloring the front, I actually color the back of it. And you'll see what I mean by that. So we put the baby light comb in, but this section here that we'd normally color, we actually take away and we'll do that in the next section. And then we color this. It's a little bit of a trick that I've done in the front in the past. It's Worked really well. So we've got a slice and then that slice is going to be diffused by the weave. I'm making sure that where the regrowth is, don't uh, go too light on the, on the lightener. I'm going to make sure it's wet and it's heavy. Otherwise it affects the performance of the um, lightning powder. Now just continue to go through here, doing nice back-to-back uh, -back baby lights. And then uh, when you're done, we'll be ready to uh, rinse it at the basin. Colours in, I'm going to take ash over to the base now, I'm going to rinse the underneath because they're ready to come out. The top is what I did last, so that still needs to be processed, we'll get that done. Then we're going to stretch a root, tone the ends and we're ready to do a haircut. We are back from the basin, hair has been, well actually it's probably been a while since we started, well it has been for us here anyway, obviously you guys are on time lapse, but and what we decided to do was what I would call fill the hair or prep the hair first. Um, so we prepped it using matrix color sync. So it's a, I guess some people call it filler, pre-color, toning. There's lots of different names for it. However, um, what we wanted to do is just deepen it to a level eight. So we used half eight M, half eight P. I processed it at the basin, just visual time. It was on there for about 13 minutes, pulled it out, rinsed it, blow dried it. I've gone in, done the foils. They've been light. Now I'm gonna dry it off and then we're going to uh, tone the hair again. So let's dry it off and get started. dried it off enough 
to be able to see where the color placement is and I'm really happy with that. Now we need to go back and shadow the root because I want to make the root shadow quite dark uh, and then we're going to tone the ends. Although they're quite good, I want it to actually be quite cool. So one of the things Ash said is she didn't want the blonde to start out too warm. So we're going to go um, deeper and cooler on the root as well as lighter and cooler on the ends because we've got these warm tones in here that we were put in last time. So when I mean last time, I mean when we um, prepped the hair and we did that, that rinse. So I think it'll be a nice contrast because you'll have cool, bright blonde and then you'll have that sort of warm, like coffee caramel color that we put in to prep. And then um, we'll bring it back. She'll look amazing and I'll just give her a trim and style it and set her on a merry way. We are going to put the root color on now. So we're stretching the root, we want a nice dark shadow. So I've decided to do 15 grams of 3N, um, 15 grams of 5N, so we get four. And then we're going to like uh, lighten it using 8P because we want it to sort of share a similar, um, a similar tone to the prep color that we did. Key is to get this on quickly but accurate. I don't like the word quick, let me rephrase that, efficiently, but it also needs to be done in a, in a uh, amount of time that is efficient because we want this to process evenly. And if we go too slow and dawdle, that's not good. The other thing is we need to make sure is that we are applying and keeping a consistent width on our, on our roots because we want that, that regrowth to be um, consistent. We don't want it to be wide in the front and narrow in the back and we've got to make sure that we apply that so i'm actually doing probably an inch maybe just over an inch wide um, and i think that'll give us a nice shadow then what i'll do is comb it comb it down a little just so we don't have a harsh line then that's how i get that um, nice transition into the ends and then when we take ash over the basin we'll rinse the roots off and then we'll do a nice color on the ends colors on and it's processing nicely and this is what I was saying about just sort of combing it through that root area just to get that little bit of a smudge the only place I'm not going to do that is these pieces in the front I want to keep them light so we're actually section them out and we leave them here I find that's really important because otherwise what happens is you end up getting like a really harsh line I find that just combing it back, you can see I use the brush just to pull the ends and get the knots out. And then I use the comb just to comb that through. And um, I'm gonna take ash over to the base. And now we're gonna rinse the um, root color off. And then um, we're gonna put the end color on. When you see her back, um, I'm gonna flat brush the hair because um, we're cutting her hair dry today, so won't be long. Okay, so her hair's dried off. Now it's time to do a haircut. It's really pretty. So actually once we, once we layer this and it's shaped um, in the front, it'll, it'll make more sense. So um, let's start in the back. So you can see that the ends are in some, uh, need some cutting, that is for sure. So let me mow through this baseline and then um, we'll get into the good stuff that you guys want to see.
finish round. Now we're going to work on this shape around the front. You guys would hear me speak a lot about how I use triangles. The first triangle that I'm, I'm going to do is going to show off Ash's cheeks and eyes. So depending on how she styles her hair, when you're doing these, you can go as far back as you like, but I'm really cautious about how wide I go because this will end up like way out here. So it's all about being deep and lean. So you can see it goes right back to here, but it's not too wide. So you see now I'll show you the projection. Always in a rectangle. You can see straight side, straight side, straight there. And we're not doing it like this. We're actually cutting square, horizontal. And then if we just give it a tiny little bit of point cutting. Now this is just to create separation. This is not to disrupt the ends. I think that's a good shape. Let me go my GHD paddle brush. And then when we pull this back straight away, we've got that length that we're looking for, which is, as I said, glances right past the cheekbone and the eyes. Good thing about this is if Ash comes in and wants that part trimmed, it's very, very easy for us to go back and find it um, without having to um, you know, worry about making, let, like the fringe getting wider and wider and wider because we keep um, adding new hair in every time the, our client wants it trimmed in. Yep, second triangle. Yeah. But this one is a little bit different. Let me just, just kind of adjust the camera so you make sure you guys can see. So instead of cutting this on top of the last section here, what we actually want to do is we want to shift it back this way. And you see that's the back of the last section as our guide. And then this, we actually want to over direct all the way back. And now let's see what happens with that. So now we're going to pull this back. And then we end up with this. And you also end up with the one underneath, which you'll see here. So now we've got two. So those shapes are great, but we don't want it to be disconnected. So I take a section from the crown to behind the ear on both sides and then we're going to use over directed graduation to match those two together so we'll spin ash this way and then so you can see how i'm projecting the hair so you can see we project it this way but i'll spin around this way so you guys can see on the so i want to over direct this so that we can join here to here. So we're really just taking this part out and we don't want to do it too close to zero because it'll make it solid. We want to actually project the hair so that it falls nice and soft. So 90 degrees over direct. Might actually do it this way just so you guys can see what I'm doing. Makes it a bit easier. I'm going to over direct here. We don't want to cut those points off, we want to leave all the length on the ends. This is just giving that little bit of blend there. Just the tiniest little bit. You see how that fell? Compared to this side, it's like here. I would prefer to you guys to stand in front and over direct it, but if I do that, it'll be a bit difficult for you guys to see what I'm doing. So I'm standing to the side. I guess you can stand from the side, but when you haven't done this before, it can be a little bit trickier to control the hair. So you can see here, these are our ends, we don't want to touch that. Again, we're going up, over directing, retain length, and then you get that nice little bit of synergy. Move on, make sure you haven't missed any. And as I said, if we choose the right angle and we cut it further away from zero, texture on these parts is not necessary because the projection will control how the hair falls. Again, cross-check this side. And then there's one little 
trick that I do before I move on. It's good. I just grab literally half an inch either side of the parting. It can actually be quite casual and I just want to put a little bit of texture in here. And that's it, time to move on to the back. Let's comb that back, have a look. Make sure it looks good. Looks amazing. It's a beautiful shape. Let's uh, put some shape in the back, huh? Back. So let's find where the hair parts naturally, which is there. And then similarly to what we did in the front, using triangles to control the distribution, and rec rectangles for the shape. We're gonna, sorry, triangles for the distribute to control the distribution of hair and rectangles sections to create, well, rectangle projection to create the shape. I'll just spin Ash back this way so you can see what I mean by, it's more like, I guess, like a pie section, but it's got three points, so it's still a rectangle, yeah? And then we're gonna project the hair so we're here and we're just going to go there and you can see that, that that was the part that came from the front look where is it here see so was our guideline and what we do is we now bring a bigger triangle over the top which incorporates hair from the left and right sides and just cross check it again. Make sure you're over the middle of the section. Don't direct it to you or away from you. Make sure you're right over the middle. And then again, we're just going to put some texture. So we've got it all there. Again, we're bringing it into the center, shifting the distribution towards the back. And you can see there's that's it there, see that the guideline just fell out. There it is there. And again, before we let it down, we just want to give it a little bit of texture. I use a flat brush, the most flattering shape to dry anyone. Well, it's all about, the whole thing we've been talking about at the front with Ash at the moment is shaping it towards the face. So why would you go and style it with a round brush? For me, it doesn't make sense. So that's why I use a flat brush and I'm actually molding the hair to the, um, the head because it makes sense, right? Because then when we go and um, style it or cut it, we're cutting it to the way that the, the hair has contoured or dried contoured to the head. And then when we go and pull this all back, it should just work because We've dried it to the shape of the head, we've cut it dry, and then we've shaped it to complement the face. So it all, all works. I mean, it's, it's flawless. Like it's, you know, if you had this thing, perfect long hair, I mean, this is it. For me, it's very versatile shape. You can see it's got lots of shape in there. Ash wants to wear it straight, she can, without having those, you know, that sort of classic sort of choppy layered look. Let me show you in the back too. So you can see I'm not just making it up. You can see all through here, there's no, no lines anywhere. So um, let's do some styling. What do you think, Ash? How are you feeling? Love it. Big change from the beginning, huh? Yeah. Great. Amazing. <laughs> right, so we're using now uh, GHD uh, Platinum Plus. Yeah, it's a nice sign, good piece of um, equipment. And uh, I'm not going to bore you guys with the tutorial on styling. You can, go, you can just watch. But for those of you who want to know what technique, I'm doing vertical waves. So that's where I hold the hair out at 90 degrees and we go vertically down. So now we're going to fast forward it and play some cool music. What do you think? Looks good, huh? Yeah. Get your hands in it a bit. It's a bit, you haven't touched it yet. You can move it around a little bit. Let me put you on this side. Because Ash actually, because of the camera position, Ash can't see, so we might swap from now on. Might put, 
our beautiful girls on this side, because I don't need to see myself on our but that ain't going to get any better. Yeah, I think um, it, I was actually surprised. Like, and I'll tell you why I'm surprised, because obviously the hair had been lined before um, and hadn't been done since September, but Ash told me she actually used the home hair colour product. I was a bit, I was actually crapping myself quietly. Um, then obviously we did the Matrix Colour Sync half 8M, half 8P to prep the base, just to deepen a little bit. Uh, and then I had to lighten it, stretch the root and tone it. So it's been for a bit today. And, um, you know, I guess using uh, Lightmaster with Bonda and all the pre-bonded colours uh, makes it, um, I don't know, less scary to push boundaries with, with colour. So thanks to Matrix for that, because um, with those products, it takes the fear from me and I take confidence in that, that I can, you know, push the boundaries and get a result like this. So I'll spin Ash around so you can see. Yeah, it's just like now we've got like nice depth in here. Um, but you know, she wanted that really sort of strong stretched root, which we've done. The styling's cool, man. Like, well, thanks for trusting me. You look good. Well, I didn't colour it last time, so I know you've done your hair last time, but I didn't colour it. So one of my mates did, Stevie did. So if you haven't seen that video, you can actually scroll through the list and. Uh, You'll find it there where we did Ash's hair, but thanks for coming in today. Thank you Appreciate so much. it. How do you do? You're welcome. Um, yeah, it was a great results. So if you think you know someone who may benefit from this video, please share it with them. It's important we share our work so others can grow. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. You've got to subscribe, man. I don't know why, but everyone tells me about YouTube. It's like, Adam, you've got to get them to subscribe. So um, please do that. And uh, from Canberra, Australia, at Access Hairdressing, it's uh, goodbye and we'll see you next time. Thanks.